Hello everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger and we've got a storm coming into the United States that has the potential here to bring not only blizzards to the northern tier of the United States, but also severe weather and tornadoes to the southern tier of the United States. This is going to track all the way across our country, bringing snowy blizzard conditions all the way up to the north, potentially even down into Missouri, with the threat of tornadoes existing pretty much all the way until the east coast. Damaging winds will be a problem with both of these threats, with the main corridor of those winds being along the edge of the storm and more out in front. In this forecast, we're going to be going over a very detailed depiction of what is going to be possible with this storm. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. But before we do, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. But but more importantly, hit that share button. If you live in any of these areas that we're talking about today, the likelihood is somebody nearby, whether it's a coworker or a family member, probably in that same risk. Starting off with our day one outlook. So this is gonna be tonight going into tomorrow morning. You can see that we have a slight risk out here for Dallas, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Bartlesville, Wichita. And around that, we have a marginal risk for severe weather. And that extends all the way from northeastern Kansas down in through parts of Texas, just to the north of Colleen, also including areas like San Angelo, Abilene and Brownwood. Your main risks for today going into tomorrow morning is going to be that tornado risk over there near Oklahoma City and Dallas, Texas. Wind risk, 15% chance for 60 mile per hour winds and above there in Wichita, Bartlesville, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Dallas, and a 5% here in the Brown. And then our hail risk is going to be a 15% as well. That's going to be mainly for Wichita Falls, Vernon, Oklahoma City, south of Wichita there in Kansas with a 5% around that in the Brown. Now it's one thing to know the kind of risks involved but here we're going to be talking about the timing and what exactly is contributing to this storm being able to do any of this so if we zoom out here a little bit first kind of push this into the future uh, you can see that as we go into about 11 p.m tonight we're going to start to see a frontal boundary dry line kind of smash into parts of oklahoma and kansas as you can see that's going to bring a line of thunderstorms all the way from just to the west of wichita to just to the west of oklahoma city and the reason that these storms are firing is at the surface we have plenty of instability one to two thousand joules per kilogram typically we want above a thousand joules per kilogram so there's definitely enough instability out in front of this storm our upper level winds aren't overly strong in this area but they're certainly strong enough to support some storms and some severe weather right around where these storms are or where we're seeing kind of the most divergence with this storm which is pretty much right in this area and that will spread a little bit further down to the south as we move throughout the day that divergence kind of creates a vacuum in the upper levels of the atmosphere, causing all that air to rush in. And that's when you start to see those storms bubbling up. Looking down at the lower levels where those storms are firing, you can see that we have actually a pretty decent shear environment, anywhere from 40 to 60 knots possible across this region. So definitely have a line of storms here that can produce severe weather and even a couple of tornadoes. As unfortunately, we move into the nighttime, into the very early morning hours where a lot of people are probably going to be sleeping. As I push this for just a couple of hours here, so we move into 2 a.m. You can see that the line is starting to approach Topeka, going through Wichita Falls, and it's just about to enter into Oklahoma City, Wichita Falls, and Abilene. As you can see, we're mainly dealing with a linear line of storms here, meaning if we do get tornadoes, they will likely be briefer and weaker tornadoes associated with this line. But given the sheer environment, I wouldn't completely rule out strong tornadoes in an environment like this, but it's a pretty conditional threat, which is why we don't have a strong tornado risk right now. Looking at our instability, you can see we still have plenty of out there as long as you see these greens and yellows that means you got plenty of storm food for the storms to eat keeping them strong unfortunately and gusty as well at around this time we're really going to start to see some heftier winds pick up over here near Bartleville and Oklahoma City even though the line hasn't really got there even south of Dallas potentially could be getting in on some 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts as we move into 2 a.m and that's line of storms is well far away so there's going to be going to be gradient winds out in front of the storm at around this time we're going to start to expect to see some potential blizzard conditions get started over here in parts of Wyoming and Colorado coming over to our wind gusts here you can see anywhere from 40 to 50 maybe some isolated spots of 60 mile per hour winds are going to be associated with this snow you know if you get anything over 35 miles per hour with some heavier snow that's a blizzard so we could easily see a blizzard or two happening over here now we're not talking about crazy 
snowfall amounts, but a brief period where wind and snow will contribute to very low visibility, making it pretty dangerous to drive out here. Now, pushing this even further into the future here by around 5 a.m., you see our line is looking a little bit scraggly, especially up here in the northern period. But you can see over here near Kansas City, a line of storms is approaching Bartlesville, Tulsa, just to the east of Oklahoma City, and about to enter into Dallas by around 5 a.m. And this is going to be on the 4th of March. So this is going to be today going into tomorrow morning. Now, it's around this time we start to see some differences here. One, our instability is really starting to die on the northern part of this storm, and it is going down a little bit further to the south. Our lower level winds at around this time will be stronger, so there is going to be a little bit of a higher chance here for some briefer and weaker tornadoes. You can see our difluence or divergence is over here, kind of in a large area right now, and that's going to continue pretty much throughout the entire day of the 4th, which does have some implications a little bit further down the line, which we will be talking about in just a second. But all in all, our ingredients are still favorable over here for some severe weather and the potential for tornadoes as this line approaches Dallas, Tulsa. Not so much up there near Kansas City, though. And instability being gone at this point, really going to lower those tornado chances to near zero. As I continue to push this forward, as you can see, as we move into eastern Texas by around 8 a.m., eastern Oklahoma going into parts of Missouri, you can start to see we see a lot of these little bean-shaped things out here. Now, some people might point to that and be like, oh my gosh, we're going to have tons of tornadoes in this area. But that's not necessarily true. Looking at our lower-level winds, it certainly supports it. 500 millibar winds certainly supports it, too. One of the reasons, though, why we're having this much convection is because because our divergence is really, the right side of our trough is really pushing into this area. And that's going to cause for a lot of forcing. And that forcing is going to be going over an area where we have really skinny, really kind of small amounts here. You can see that the edge to edge here on our available instability or our available storm food is pretty small as this storm moves through. And if we look at where our storms are firing, they're kind of in that right side of that instability. So if I circle that and come back over here to our instability, you can see that we're actually not on the leading edge with most of our storms where we have the most instability. We're actually on a little bit of a less, a little bit more stable portion of this instability. Not only that, our main divergence, kind of the southern part of it, is going to be kind of in this area at this point. So a lot of these storms down here are going to have less forcing and really not a whole lot of instability to go with it. And also, there's a lot of competition for that limited instability. You see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, storms trying to fire in that area and they're all going to be battling for that limited instability in storm food. Think of it like a lot of hungry people going into a buffet, but the buffet is only one plate. They're all going to be competing trying to get them chicken wings and ribs off of the plate. Most of them are going to leave the buffet starving. So that's kind of what we're dealing with right there. Further up to the north, we're mainly just talking about some rain. Still some severe weather though could be possible from east of Tulsa on into Arkansas. Now moving back over to our snow, talking about it a little bit. You can see that that snow is starting to increase over South Dakota, now into Nebraska, Colorado, and our wind gusts are really picking up here. I mean, we're talking about a widespread area of 40 to 60, potentially even 70 miles per hour in some of these isolated spots within here, which is really going to cause some major issues or visibility on the roads out here. So if you guys are driving anywhere in and along this area at 8 a.m., Please be really careful. I would advise against it, though, as it's going to be extremely windy, especially given the fact that none of these are thunderstorms in this area. It's going to feel like a severe snow thunderstorm, but without the thunder, but with all the wind. Now, as I push this further into the future, as you can see, as these storms start to move into Louisiana and Arkansas, kind of got a scraggly line here. That's mainly because up here in the north, we're really lacking instability at this point. And further down to the south, we're lacking a little bit of forcing, but you can see there are some mature cells firing down here. It's going to be around this time when our lower level shear is really starting to pick up. We're talking about anywhere from 40 to about 70 to 80 knots of lower level shear. That is extremely strong lower level shear. Up here in the upper levels, you can see we're getting a glancing blow from our trough here. Divergence is really up in this area, though. Now keep that in mind as I switch over to our instability. You can see that our instability is kind of back here, kind of behind our storms yet again. Our storm Storm line is right here while our main axis of instability kind of overruns like this. So some of these storms are in some decent instability, but on the kind of weaker side of the instability, our forcing is up here. So really any of these storms kind of in this area, are going to have some of the best chances to become tornadic and potentially strongly tornadic. 
The storms down here to the south will struggle because one, our lapse rates are going to be a little bit low, which allow the updrafts to rise more vigorously. And also our main area of forcing is going to be a little bit further uh, to the north, meaning we got to watch these storms for an elevated tornado potential. And our strongest ones will most likely be on the northern tip of that instability. So I'm really looking out for areas like east of Shreveport into Jackson, Mississippi, where we're probably going to see our highest tornado threat. And again, this is at 11 a.m. on the 4th. So we're still kind of in the morning hours here. Further up to the north, we're going to be talking about widespread wind gusts really all the way out in front of this storm at this point. Coming over to the wind gusts, you can see we have a large area of 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts. Our line of storms is back over here. So you can see we're getting some gradient winds, pretty much a low pressure pushing up against a high pressure system, causing some pretty hefty gradient winds there. Also, look back over here, man. Widespread 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts are going to be expected still associated with some blizzard conditions in this area. Northern Texas, the Oklahoma Panhandle, Western Kansas, also going into Eastern Colorado, maybe even portions of Nebraska over there near Lake, sorry, North Platte. We're really going to have to watch out for some damaging winds high enough damaging winds to cause significant power outages over here. I mean, 60 to 70 miles per hour for that long is going to cause a lot of power outages, especially if you get any snow on those power lines to kind of weigh them down. That's just only going to increase the risk for that. So I really don't think we're going to have like a really powerful tornado outbreak with this storm, but I do think there are some chances still for a couple of tornadoes and also some of them could be strong, especially down here in the southern region of this storm. Talking about Louisiana going into like Jackson, Mississippi, a little bit further down to the south there. But by the time this storm reaches eastern Louisiana, you can see that we have mainly a line of storms with some stronger storms kind of just nosing into that divergence. And that's why those storms are a little bit stronger than the ones to the south, because they're still in that main area of forcing, which forces the storms to get started. And you see by this point, as we move into 2 p.m., our instability is really starting to tank where these storms are. They're sitting right here, just barely in that area of divergence. Guys, if this is just a little bit up to the north out of this instability, we could easily see maybe a couple of tornadoes, but none of them will probably be strong. But as long as the divergence still clips the northern portion of this instability, we could still get a strong tornado, especially here in this corridor. Further down the south, these storms are going to struggle to mature, but we can't completely rule out tornadoes down there. Now it's around 2 p.m. when we're really going to start to see the strongest lower level jet out of this storm which is why we're going to be getting so much winds with this storm out in front of it, potentially 60 mile per hour winds all the way up into northern Arkansas, coming all the way down into southern Louisiana. This is mainly because, again, of those gradient winds. And then further up to the north, we're going to be watching for a little bit of a sneaky threat. You can see up here near Topeka and Kansas City, there's a little bit of instability here. Now, our dew points are not overly high. I mean, we're only talking about 40 to 50 degree dew points, but our temperatures are loft are pretty darn cold pretty darn cold. That's going to allow some moisture to rise and cause some potential tornadoes over here. It's a very low chance, but you can't completely rule it out. I think our highest chance for anything is going to be hail and damaging winds out of this going into Topeka and Independence as we move into around 2 p.m. Also over there near Lincoln, watch out uh, maybe for some uh, damaging winds there. Now, even though most of our most dangerous storms are further to the south, up here at around 2 p.m., this is when we start to see it get pretty interesting here with our snow. You can see that's really starting to move into Nebraska and a little bit there into Kansas. Look at these widespread 50 to 60 mile per hour winds coming all the way through that corridor. I mean, we're going to see a lot of blizzard warnings as this moves through. Watch out there in that area. We're definitely going to be keeping a close eye on that as we move throughout the fourth. Now coming back down into the southeast where we have still this line of storms propagating off to the east. You can see as we go into around 5 p.m., we're going to have a line of storms in central Mississippi. And you can see that these storms in the south are still kind of struggling to mature. But right there on that northern edge of the Difluence this is where our strongest and highest tornado chance is going to be. Really anywhere from southern Mississippi up through just to the north of Jackson is where I think most of our tornadic activity will exist. You can see we have plenty of shear up there. They'll have Difluence aloft here pretty much all the way throughout the area of Mississippi going into Alabama, really allowing for some extra buoyancy in the area. But man, look at this surface base cape. You can see it's all the way back here. Out in, out in front of these storms, you can see there's not a whole lot of instability for these storms to eat. They're currently outrunning that instability, meaning we're going to start to see our tornado threat go down after 5 p.m. Given our shear environment, there's still certainly a possibility for some spin-ups all the way along this line with the highest chance for a spin-up to happen in this region. Again, this line is impacting areas like Baton Rouge, coming towards Katoop 
Tupelo, Corinth, the Jackson, Union City as we move into around 5 p.m. Moving up further to the north, you can see we can have some pretty heavy snow uh, starting to enter into eastern Nebraska now in northern Kansas, also into South Dakota and parts of Minnesota. And you might be wondering, is this going to still be a blizzard? Absolutely. I mean, we're talking another pocket here with that snow with 50 to 60, potentially some isolated spots getting pretty close to 70 mile per hour wind gusts as it pulls up into this area at around 5 p.m. I really do believe we're going to see a large swath of potentially millions of people without power uh, anywhere this storm goes. I mean, we could have even some power outages further down to the south as well. And pushing this storm into Alabama, this is where we're really going to start to see this storm struggle. Now, we could still have some severe thunderstorm warnings all the way along this line going up into Nashville. I think it's going to be the furthest northern extent we see some severe thunderstorm warnings. But our instability is really tanking even in the southern mode here. So I really think tornado warnings are going to start to go down from here and also the chances for tornadoes is going significantly down as our instability wanes into the night there's still going to be a small chance for tornadoes given the fact that we still have some strong lower level winds very strong lower level winds and some pretty strong upper level winds but given the complete lack of instability it's not going to be like tornado spam or anything it's just going to be you know one or two tornadoes every you know 30 minutes to an hour you still typically need to be weather aware as we move into night 9 p.m. here into Alabama with our greatest threat for tornadoes existing in this corridor with a very, very conditional risk further up to the north. Probably won't make it up into Tennessee. But coming back to our snowfall, you can see that we're getting still some very heavy snow here into southern Minnesota, parts of Iowa, also e completely covering eastern Nebraska and even trying to make it down into Wichita there. And those very, very strong wind gusts. Let me bring up my thing. This is a, over here near Omaha. We could have widespread 70 mile per hour winds happening happening in this region, no problem. Potentially gusting to over 70 miles per hour. This is an extremely dangerous blizzard. I mean, that's about as dangerous as you can get with snow. It's really hard to get snow moving faster than that. So it's not gonna last for super long, but visibility is gonna be low for a good couple of hours. And the power is most likely gonna go out in all of these regions where these 60 to 70 mile per hour winds, you know, are touching. And those wind gusts go all the way down. Those starts to turn more into 50 to 60 mile per hour winds as that makes it down into Wichita, Bartlesville, Tulsa, and Oklahoma City. Man, so that a big swath there. 40 to 50 mile per hour winds really in this entire area with some ice isolated areas of up to 70 mile per hour wind gusts possible further up to the north. Truly a powerful snowstorm is going to happen. And heck, this is definitely the most powerful winds that we've had in a snowstorm this winter. I mean, this is kind of bonkers if you really think about it. So as the storm continues to move off to the east, we're still just out of the range of the east coast on our HRRR model. So I'm not going to talk about it too much today. We should be in range tonight when I go live for another live stream to answer your guys' questions in terms of the severe weather, but still a little bit out of range and still a little bit out of range in the northern portion with all of those winds but bottom line is is that there's still going to be a small chance for tornadoes as we move past Alabama but it's going to be pretty darn low precipitation type and snow up here see that most of Iowa going into Minneapolis and Topeka and Lincoln by the time we get into 12 a.m. on the 5th. Still ongoing out there. Very heavy snow associated with that. And our wind gusts are still out there. I mean, still widespread 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts associated with this storm. It's kind of mind blowing. I'm not going to lie. Just how strong this blizzard could be up in this area. So and coming back down here to the south from that leading edge, even though the storms and the tornado threat are going down, that wind threat is going to be picking up in and along this line with 40 to 50. Some isolated spots of 60 mile per hour wind gusts possible up there in the Appalachia Mountains. Switching over to our NAM model at around this time, you can see that uh, the line kind of falls apart here and it really struggles to get its act together as it moves over into the East Coast. We're mainly talking about widespread potential potential here for some damaging winds so definitely watch out over there in the east coast and then back over on the northern portion of this storm as we move into 12 p.m on the 5th you can still see we still have a lot a lot going on down here with some snow making it all the way down to the south into illinois and potentially indiana and still some pretty strong 50 to 60 mile per hour winds working its way all the way down to this area and look at this heavy snow up here in canada somebody's gonna get a lot of snow up here now in terms 
terms of our temperatures on the back side of this, you can see we're talking about anywhere between 20s going into the 30 degree temperatures kind of in this area on the back side. And you can see it really doesn't get too cold down here in the southeast, maybe dipping into the 40s and 30s, mainly because the cold front on this storm is going to kind of be lagging behind kind of in this area of that storm. You can, And what is kind of moving through our area is more of a dry line and a Pacific front than it is a cold front. So it is going to bring some cooler air down, but it's not going to be a huge shot of cold air that's going to stick around for very long. But it is going to be cold enough to support those blizzard conditions up here in the northern United States. So just make sure you guys are keeping an eye on that and prepare for some power outages and very difficult travel in the region. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for me today. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your evening, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.